When you ask a patient, how can I help you today? And they reply, I've started itching all over, doc. Does your heart just sink a little bit like mine does? You know it's not going to be a short consultation because the list of possible causes are endless, as are the tests involved. Even after all that, a cause isn't always found frustrating your patient and you. Wouldn't it be nice if just occasionally the answer was as simple as finding the one pen in the house that actually worked? To save you much frustration, therefore, I would like you to add scabies to that list in any patient with a new generalised itch, especially with a pimple-like eczematous rash. Why? Because it's more common than most of the other possible causes. It's also a clinical diagnosis. No fancy blood tests, no x-rays or scans is going to help you. Therefore, my first golden rule for never missing scabies is just consider it. I've missed it a couple of times and over the years I felt pretty foolish. What's that? It's easy to make me appear foolish. What? like talking to a stuffed toy. Scabies, or to give you your proper name, Sarcoptes scabii variant hominis, like any highly contagious disease, sweeps in waves of cases across the country. Natural immunity from previous infections is only temporary, and once immunity in the population drops, scabies re-emerges, leading to new outbreaks. In the UK, such a wave of cases occurs every 17 years. Keep listening so I can tell you how to avoid missing this important diagnosis. What do you do first in every consultation? Ask the right questions because 80% of diagnoses in primary care are made on the history alone. Here's the questions you need to ask. At what time of day is your itch at its worst? Where does it itch? And most importantly, do you know anyone else who has started itching in the past few weeks? So my second golden rule is this. Ask the right questions because that's where the clues will be hidden. While there is no blood test, x-ray or scan to help you, there is one tool that can help you confirm the diagnosis. Guess what? It's your dermoscope. What I love about dermoscopy and scabies is that if you find just one mite burrow within the skin, you have your diagnosis. Burrows are only found in scabies. Your consultation will then become as easy as matching socks when they're all black. Where are you going to find these burrows on your patient's skin? Now, I don't know about you, but I feel somewhat uncomfortable checking my patient's breasts, nipples or genitals. If you wish to hunt for the burrows there, then first of all, make sure you've got a good chaperone and also a good exclamation ready for your patient. I concentrate on the hands and wrists, palms and sides of fingers in particular, and around the elbows. Failing that, I then next look around the feet, the heels and in between the toes. And failing that, I then look around the tummy button and the belt area. Bearing in mind that the typical patient will only have five to 15 burrows, unless they are immunocompromised or have Norwegian scabies, in which case they can have thousands. To the naked eye, burrows are around one centimeter long, usually of an S or Z shape. You may think they are small scratch marks, but these are very narrow and no one scratches their skin and creates an S or a Z shape. The adult mite burrows at a rate of 0.5 millimeters or so for their four to eight week lifespan. When you find something that looks like a burrow, reach for your dermoscope. I use contact dermoscopy using a gel. This is what you're looking for. It's called the delta wing sign much like a jet high up in the sky with a contrail tailing behind it. The delta is the front head and feet of the eight-legged mite, the body being less easily seen. The black dots are their feces, and sometimes you can even see an egg. Here's one of my patients I saw recently. This is the web space between his thumb and index finger, a common location for a burrow. Note the delta-shaped head at the end of the burrow. If we zoom in with the eye of faith, you can make out a head and two front legs. The body will be here. Note the little black dots of feces within the burrow. My third goal golden rule is this, learn where to look for and how to identify a mite burrow. Wonderful, you've made a confident diagnosis and your patient is awestruck and marvels at your magnificent diagnostic skills. You celebrate, then they ask you, how are you going to treat me doc? You now need my three golden rules for treating scabies. How does a person get scabies anyway? Don't worry, your pets are safe, they don't need putting down. It's an obligate human parasite, so you only get it from another human. If you live alone and don't touch another human being, you you're safe, although you probably have other problems to worry about. It's not caused by being unclean, therefore washing and regular dental flossing won't protect you. What is required is close physical contact. Shaking hands just isn't enough, but holding hands is. I read on the internet that the mite is able to jump 2.5 centimeters. Let's try it. Go on then. Pathetic. No, they can't jump. Why do people itch with scabies? Is it the sensation of this arachnid scrabbling around as it munches on their epidermal keratinocytes? 
No, it's an immune response to the mite's saliva and faeces that causes the itch. And because this is a delayed hypersensitivity reaction, it takes three to six weeks for the itch to develop. This gives us our first golden rule of treatment. Treat all the household members and close physical contacts at the same time, even if they have no symptoms. Those without symptoms are highly likely to be incubating scabies as well, but it's not been long enough for their symptoms to develop yet. If you don't treat them, your treated patient will become reinfected again straight away. It's a pain to do this if you have a family with say 15 people in the same household, but get this golden rule right the first time or you'll end up chasing your tail and a cycle of treatment and reinfection that keeps going on and you never eradicate the problem. What treatment do I use? Well, first line, I use permethrin 5% cream. A 30 gram tube is enough to cover one human adult skin from the jawline downwards, not missing a single square millimeter of skin. For infants and the elderly, also apply it to the face and the scalp. Prescribe enough tubes to cover all your patients' close contacts and get them treated all on the same evening, leaving the cream on overnight for eight to 12 hours. It's non-toxic to humans and hardly any of it is absorbed through the skin where a high concentrator builds up which will kill those adult mites. However, crucially, not the eggs. Which leads us to treatment golden rule number two. Repeat the treatment seven days later. You've killed the adult mites, sorry, but eggs will still hatch. It takes up to 10 days for the larvae to hatch, mate and start laying eggs again. This second treatment prevents this occurring and therefore prescribe two tubes of 30 grams of permethrin per adult and I guesstimate how many others are needed for infants or children. What about bedding and clothing, I hear you ask? The mites can't live off the human body for more than an hour, so sleeping in a hotel bed is not a concern. The greater danger is with whom you are sleeping. Choose your bed partner with care. However, it's sensible to wash bed linen, towels and clothing in a normal wash at the same time you apply the treatment to your skin. What about treatment failures? A recent study has shown that there isn't currently any resistance to permethrin cream. Talking to patients, I think they often fail to reach between the shoulder blades with the cream. That's what family members are for, right? If they miss just one mite in a burrow, treatment is going to fail. Remember, the itch is the byproduct of an allergy to the mites and their feces. Even after treatment, they're still there, although dead. The treatment doesn't dissolve their corpses away. Until the skin is shed, there will still be an itch. How long does it take for your skin to fully turn over and renew itself from removing the dead mites? It takes 20 to 40 days. This brings us golden rule for treatment number three. Give it six weeks from that initial treatment for the itch to go away before you declare treatment a failure. Explain this to your patient before treating them or they will be back within 14 days saying, I'm no better doc, your treatment has failed. The successful treatment of scabies requires excellent patient education and follow-up. I print off the British Association Dermatology leaflet, there's a link below, and circle the important points for the patient, emphasizing all the skin needs treating from the jaw downwards, why it needs applying seven days later, and why it can take up to six weeks for that nasty itch to fade. I then contact them six weeks later, asking if they, their family and contacts are better and if the itch has gone. What if they're still itching after those six weeks? Don't panic. The most common reason is they've missed a mite. Discuss how they applied the cream. For instance, avoid washing hands after applying treatment, or if they do, reapply the cream. You can retreat, but this time consider applying the permethrin cream for 12 hours and then reapplying it again 12 hours later to make it a full 24 hour coverage. Because the itch can last up to six weeks, I offer treatment for that with oral antihistamines and a moderately potent topical steroid for the patient to use on the bits of skin. So next time you see someone with a new generalized itch, consider these six golden rules and your patients will thank you, although the mites won't. Now, consider watching one of these two videos and keep adding to your dermoscopic abilities. Training a primary care dermoscopist for every general practice.